Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about bad software engineers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, is it true that a bad programmer can bring down an entire company? Well, in theory, yes. I've only heard of one situation when it happened. Or, well, it depends on how you define bringing something down, but you can definitely, as a single developer, cause enough damage for the company to lo lose quite a lot of revenue. In extreme cases, you can bring down the entire company, uh, but that I'm going to talk on, like, we'll talk about, like, sort of the situation where that can happen. But usually, I find that it's not just one specific developer, it is one, usually, it, the thing starts with one or two, like, a few developers, they start the problem. And then, uh, well, other developers add to the pile of problems until the problem grows so big that it spreads like a cancer. That's usually how it goes. So let's talk about the extreme case first and foremost. The extreme case when uh, a single developer can take down an entire company is if you are in a situation where, say, uh, compliance is the thing. Uh, there are situations where a there are situations where a developer has, for example, deleted an entire production database. It is feasible for a company to come back from that, but if it's the right if it's the wrong time for the wrong company, it it might be the kiss of death to the entire company. Uh, that not, that's not necessarily compliance, but at the very least, security. In terms of compliance, you might have a uh, regulated work flow or something like that where you actually break the law fairly severely in some in some situations where a developer makes a a mistake or something like that that say leaks a bunch of credit cards or whatever or there's a massive breach in security there's been a few incidents such as for certificate authorities where an issue has occurred and the, it brings down the whole the whole organization because now the trust is broken and nobody's going to trust the company anymore. Uh, these are extreme cases when a single developer can bring things down, but I mean this doesn't necessarily have to do with that they're bad. It can simply be that uh, you have bad practices within the company or bad processes. It can happen without a specific developer being bad. It can be a mistake. Uh, it's a very critical mistake, but it's still just a mistake. And you can absolutely have develop one single developer who slows down an entire organization. And I, this is actually, the, I would say this is the norm. This is how it usually goes uh, when you accumulate legacy and you have a workflow that becomes worse and worse over time. You usually have some developer, it can be a senior developer, it can be a junior developer, uh, usually it can be, and I mean it can be an architect, that's also a really good one. I think th there was a really nice story about IBM where this had happened, there was an architect who had gone to too many tech talks and said that, you know what, IBM should move over to microservices, and uh, he just didn't know how to do it because he couldn't, like, he, he understood the architecture, but he didn't have a fucking clue about how to, how to structure the organization and the engineering department in such a way so that they understood how to do it well. And uh, when they tried to, like when the product was delivered, the main website took, I think they said in the tech talk, nine minutes to load. Nine minutes to load a website. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous and uh, I would say that although IBM is still around that's a pretty severe problem and they basically had to scrap the thing and like start from uh, start all over again to get the thing working again so that's an example of someone who can do some serious damage at the high level but even at the lower level than the architect although architects are very very notoriously good at fucking up an entire organization actually so notorious that it's not once or twice uh, but several times I've had we've had uh, engineers in the recruitment pipeline who are like their first question is do you have an architect because if you have an architect I don't want to work here uh, 
it would be good if a prerequisite for being an architect is that you have been a serious software developer for very for many many years you should earn becoming an architect if you didn't go through like okay, to me that I mean this is just me personally if you are an architect without going through the software development process and knowing all of these sorts of things uh, I think that you should really avoid that for everybody's sake because uh, an architect should be the equivalent of an engineering general you should be voted basically in my opinion in order to become uh, you should be lifted up by your peers as someone who stands out uh, to be that sort of role because otherwise you might actually fuck it up really really horribly you can of course still do that but at the very least it's going to be a lower risk however what usually happens when you see someone who really has a negative impact on a company uh, it, it comes from that they're usually stressed or they have a genius idea or they have something going on that makes them build something that doesn't turn out all that well and usually that happens when they're working on a critical as I like to call backbone feature something that is connected to the workflow of a lot of people now the problem is that even if let's say for the sake of argument they build this thing it doesn't turn out well and other people can identify that it doesn't turn out all that well here comes the 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 the, the this is as close to reality as I can bring you what then happens is that the next developer who's gonna touch that code or do something with it is going to be faced with a choice and this is faith this is the moment that this, their life has been building up to up to now they can choose to do the right thing to choose the path of righteousness throw that fucking thing away and fix it so that it actually is the thing that is required to do the job well and go to heaven and be virtuous or go to Valhalla and be remembered as a titan of industry or at, the t at least the titan of, in of engineering or they can listen to the devil and let their lazy ass ignore the problem and then do shim programming where they try to just well I'll just do a quick hack thing and that choice my friend is presented to many 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 developers every single day in every single company on this planet that we all share and the devil usually wins. Usually what happens is that they, because they're in a situation where they don't feel like they own this code or they feel like well, I, I, don't, I don't want to increase the scope of the work that I do so I'm just, I can figure out the way around this problem that I don't have to really fix it. It, does, it actually makes the code just a little bit worse but I will do that because if, if I do that I I can still deliver and I can ship on time and at least then I don't have to be blamed for this shitty code. You're just enabling the problem. You're letting it grow like a cancer. You may not be the one who's put the fucking tumor in the system, but you are sh you are the one who is giving it strength now. And then the next person comes after that. And after a few times, the cancer is now so grown and so spread through the system that after a while nobody's gonna fix it and now it's such a big blob of cancer code that uh, the solution is really only to learn how to live with it it has mutated to the point where the system is now forever in a it, it, it's like having a permanent uh, a permanent injury it's like being maimed the system has been crippled and there's no way for you to solve it because the cost of fixing the issue is simply too high it's not gonna it may not kill the company immediately it may never kill the company but in some cases it will kill the company over time or at the very it might also just reduce the quality of the service or make you lose customers and so forth but this is usually the thing that happens this is the scary stories that you hear from bitter senior developers about how you can get into a big corporation and so forth where this code base looks absolutely horrible this is how it starts it starts with one person making a bad decision and then the next person not addressing the issue and just thinking about their short-term victory 
and just fixing their thing and shimming in their feature and then the next person does the same thing and then the next thing and then, and then the next person and so forth and so forth and so forth. So what I want you to take away from this is that yes, it, it is absolutely possible for a single engineer to bring down an entire company. It is extraordinary, it's extraordinarily rare that it happens, but it is possible. It, is, it has happened. It doesn't happen all that often. The way it usually happens is that someone has a genius idea or somebody doesn't care. Somebody makes a fatal mistake with the core feature or something that is very important to the system and the workflow of everybody else. And now we all have to share this problem together. And it's kind of like having a hot, uh, like a hot potato or a hot, like a, a fireball. You just throw it to each other. You don't. Nobody wants to touch it. And so the fucking problem just keeps on growing until it's so big that you can't solve it. And the way to do it is to take the path of the virtues and fix it while it is still cheap to fix the problem. Because as, if you address it quickly enough, sure, it might, might suck at that moment, but it is still fixable. There is a way out of this. If you don't do it, you wait for long enough, there is no longer any other way to fix the problem than rewriting the whole fucking system. Have a great day.